a whole, a, a whole lot more because the traveling and then the getting the tree. So basically I'm going in with the story to go, hey, if we focus on getting what we want, don't question it, just keep moving forward. You're gonna succeed at it, all right? Just focus on the goal. The goal uh, is to continue to grow your business during the holiday season. People always ask too, is the holiday season the best time to sell? Realtors would be like, ah, oh, no, I understand you wanna, you want to decorate for Thanksgiving and you want to decorate for Christmas and the new year and you want to have parties. No, get it on the market, get it on the market. People, it is a great time to sell anytime, <laughs> right? So our job is to, so if we don't have anybody that's wanting to sell, we don't have anybody that's wanting to buy, which means our business will stop and you cannot stop your business. None, not all of us are in a position to stop our business and go, all right, let's just live out the last quarter and on our savings and then we'll figure it out the first quarter. No, we don't want to do that. All right. So I'm going to start off with the uh, daily reader. It's, uh, it's, it's something I'm going to do and I'm going to share my screen with you so you guys can follow along on it. All right. You may even want to take some notes on it. The first thing I want to ask though is, you know, what specifically, what specifically do you want to accomplish out of this call today? And then I want you to be purposeful on taking notes that's going to help you. Okay. And then I want you to put, ask the same question, what will be different as a, re, as a result of working on this area if I don't work on it? So if I work on it, what are the results I'm going to get? And if I don't work on it, what are the results I'm going to get? Well, here's what happens. If you don't work on something that we talk about today, you get zero results. If you do something, you're going to get better results than if you didn't do anything at all, right? You get up to bat, that's your opportunity. You never get up to bat, you'll never have that opportunity. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to, we're going to go through this together. Um, and, and I'm just going to kind of skip along a little bit. So today's reader, read was uh, practice your craft today, Okay. Um, practice your craft today. So I'm going to kind of skip down to the, the, uh, the last paragraph. People often ask John Maxwell, how can I grow my business? Or how can I make my department better? The answer is for your person, the answer is for you to personally to grow. See, if we want better results, we have to grow. What happens is, most people just sit there and they don't know what to do, or they don't want to do anything at all, or they know everything already. And that's not the best attitude to have. The only way to grow your organization or your business is to grow the leader, the leaders who run it. And that's you. You're the CEO. You're the CEO of your business. You got to grow you. You are a leader. We are a leader when you're in your listing consultation, your buyer consultation, your negotiations. You are a leader. People are looking at you, okay? Um, by making yourself better, you make the others better. Retired General uh, uh, Electric CEO Jack Welch said, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. Now, how do we relate that to real estate? As we grow our knowledge, as we grow our leadership skills, as we grow our ability to, to ask better questions, our business is a lot smoother. We can work with the buyers and sellers a lot better. And then we can share our successes with others to help them become more successful. What new thing outside of your comfort zone will you attempt today? What new thing will you do to come out of your comfort zone to attempt today? All right. So, so that's the daily reader for today. And, and it kind of resonated with, with everything today too, because we have to continue. You guys are always on these calls and, and I commend you for that. And I, and you ought to tap yourself on the back and say, congratulations for learn, wanting to learn to grow, wanting to grow in something today, you know, um, we can all be experts in something, but we got to always practice it. We got to practice it religiously. 
right? Inside the red book, red, what's it say? In order to be a master at something, you have to do it how many times? May not, may not. 10,000. 10,000. 10, 10,000 times. 10,000 times. Exactly. So I, I asked this question, those of you who are highly successful in your business, have you sold 10,000 homes? Okay. I don't know too many people on these calls that have sold 10,000 homes. So are you a master at it? So we got to continuously practice and we got to continuously grow and learn from it. Okay. So um, I'm going to go into the, uh, I'm going to go into some stuff here I have open for you. Let me get to it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you now. Okay. We're going to talk about low efficiency, medium efficiency, and high efficiency. And then you got to rate yourself in there. Boy, I'll tell you what, did Fred DeFalco rate us in that room or did we rate ourselves and then come to realization? Holy cow, we are better than this because we, we heard this, right? So low efficiency, meaning one to four contacts per hour equals 144 contacts will equal one appointment. That's low efficiency. You get a dialer. And, this, and I'm going to share how this is going to relate into the holiday season. 480 contacts equals one listing. 10 listing appointments equals three listings on low efficiency. So this is someone who doesn't practice their scripts, doesn't uh, have a great listing presentation, doesn't have a marketing plan in place, okay? Doesn't have a buyer presentation. Medium efficiency. You have to have five to seven contacts per hour. That means you got to make 60 contacts for one appointment. 120 contacts equals one listing. In, in order to get one listing, you need two listing appointments. And this is for medium efficiency. So that's a 50% conversion. This is someone who has a listing presentation and a marketing plan. This is someone who has a buyer presentation and, and a uh, buyer consultation. But this is someone who doesn't practice their scripts. They're role playing, right? They're not asking for the business 100% of the time. Every listing appointment and buyer appointment you go on, you're asking for the business. High efficiency. Someone who's making 10 contacts per hour and not allowing the distractions to happen. 24 contacts equals one appointment. 32 contacts equals one listing. Did you guys see my screen earlier? Okay, you did. Okay, thanks, Joe. It just popped up and said participants can now see your screen. I just wanted to make sure. All right, so 32 contacts equals one appointment. Four listing appointments equals three listings. So that's a 75 to 80% conversion. So here's some numbers for you guys to really look at. And I'm going to put this into the chat box so you guys have it. So when you start going, man, I haven't gotten any listing appointments. Well, maybe you haven't called anyone. <laughs> well, I, I, I went on three listing appointments, but I didn't get a listing. Well, maybe you need to practice your scripts. Maybe you were talking too much. Okay. So here's a form that can really give you some good direction on helping you achieve your goal. So when you are planning your goal of how many listings you want to take next year, this can help you. All right. So if I want to be high efficiency, I need to script and role play every day. All right. So I'm going to stick this into the uh, chat box for you guys. Now I'm going to go into the, the holidays. Okay. We are already in the holiday season. How do you stay top of mind? Also, how do you create new marketing ideas through the holidays? 
And I'm going to kind of give you a couple tidbits on each holiday, and then you can expand from there. The first thing um, for for we have we have um, Halloween coming up. Okay, Halloween's coming up. You know, there's pumpkin patches all around wherever we live. It doesn't matter where you live. There's a pumpkin patch around you. Okay. Um, you could do, uh, get a bunch of those little pumpkins and you can pass them out in your community with, with a, uh, pumpkin pie recipe attached to the, the, the stem and just put them on people's front patio. A hundred pump, hundred minimal, uh, mini pumpkins are going to cost you, I don't know, they're 25 cents a piece, 30 cents a piece. It's not a whole lot of money. So if you live in a community you know, even if it's a small, even if it's a small street or not a community, get 50, get 20, whatever it is, get those little pumpkins, put a, a pumpkin recipe on there and put your card attached to it. Thank you, Claire, for the recipe on there because she, we talked about this before. All right. So what is that going to do for you? Here's what it's going to do for you. It's putting your face out there and it's a very little cost for the opportunity to stick these uh, little pumpkins out there. So I, I shared this with, uh, um, with in, a, in a class about three years ago. There was an agent, one agent out of 40 people in the room that did it. She got two listings in her community. And by the way, it was one of the most desirable communities in our area. So they sold really quickly. And I think her, I think she probably made about $20,000 just from that one idea. All right. And it was a good opportunity for her to walk with her two young daughters with a wagon with all these pumpkins in there, just putting them out on the, on the, uh, the doorsteps of the, uh, the people in the community. Now it's work. You got to go get the pumpkins. You got to print out the recipe. You got to attach a card to it, right? And maybe even you attach where the pumpkins came from, which, uh, which, you know, um, where, where you, what pumpkin patch you went to. Uh, maybe you start marketing the pumpkin patch for the people there. Say, hey, I'm going to tell, I'm going to pass these out to 100 people and I'm going to give this location as well, you know? Um, so, so that's one way. That's a huge opportunity right now. How does it work? You get in your car, you go to the pumpkin patch, you buy the pumpkins. You put the card on it and you hand them out. That's how it works. All right. How cool would it be if you walked out to your front, uh, walked out your front door and there was a little mini pumpkin there with a card on it and a recipe? Would you be offended? No. Would someone say, oh, this is a community for no solicitation? Well, I'm not solicitating anything. I'm, I'm giving you a pumpkin with a pumpkin recipe on it. Throw the card away if you choose to. Who cares? All right. Many people knock on doors and leave things. You don't have to knock on the door. Just put it right on the front porch, front doorstep. Just make sure they don't trip on it. If you know that they have two kids or three kids, Put three little pumpkins there and one recipe on it, on the pumpkin, you know, so they may want to paint them. See, I know my community out of the 105 homes in my little circle. I know almost every single owner, how many kids they have, how many pets they have, because I talk to everyone. I walk around that community every single day and I talk to everyone that's outside. And I've been living there 16 years, so I'm, I'm I've passed every single person that lives there. I know what they have. I know how many kids they have. I see the kids. I see the bikes. So, all right. So that's that's the uh, that's the Halloween, and maybe you can even send out a Halloween card to your community. Hey, parents, as you come by and bring your kids. I'm going to have a little Photoshop set up. Would you like to take pictures of your kids there? Something. I don't know. We have this massive, massive cat that I set up in the front uh, of our front doors of our house. The cat stands about, 
I don't know, 14, 15 feet. It's one of those blow up things. And the kids have to walk through it to get candy. And when they walk through it, it's got thunder and cat noises and all this other stuff and lights. People take pictures in front of that cat year in, year out. Every single year. We've had it for, I don't know, 13 years. And they, they say, we come here every year just for the cat. <laughs> so I don't know, something where they can be a Photoshop. Okay. So that's Halloween. Any questions on that? Any, any, uh, any suggestions that you can think of or add into it, please. I want to hear it because it's going to help everyone else out, but we want you to start looking, go to these pumpkin patches now because those little pumpkins will last a good 30 days, 40 days, easy, you know, during this, this time frame. Okay. All right. Um, next thing is, is Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, just some thoughts and ideas for Thanksgiving. All right. Um, there's several different things that I, I think could be really, really awesome for Thanksgiving. Okay. Number one, everything that you do, you get to write off as a business expense. What if you went to our healthcare workers for the, you know, in the month of November and fed the ER, the nurses and the doctors with a, uh, with a holiday, with a Thanksgiving meal, Turkey, potatoes and everything else and brought it in in a buffet style. Really, how much is it actually going to cost you? Right? That's a thought. What if you went to your local fire department and brought them Thanksgiving dinner the, the week before or the, whatever it may be, maybe find three departments, take a picture with the fire department, post it. Okay. What is that going to do for you? It's giving you public exposure and what's on your public, what's on your public page. You're a realtor, right? So that's just a marketing tool to put your face out there. Here's the other thing. Go ahead and get you. Remember we, talk, we always talk about our cheerleaders. Who are my top cheerleaders? Who are the people that I've done business with in the last 12 months, 18 months, two years, start sending them out emails maybe a card. Hey, we're doing a, a pumpkin pie and apple pie uh, giveaway for our uh, appreciation towards uh, Thanksgiving, a, a Thanksgiving apple pie or, or pumpkin pie. Please let me know which one you want. So when I make the order, we'll have it available to you. And here's the date and location for pickup. And you always want to do it the week before. The week before, because people are people are getting off uh, school. You know, they got their vacations planned. They might be traveling during that time. You never know. I promise you this. They're going to come and pick it up. So go to Sam's, go to BJ's. I, I think somebody had mentioned uh, the pumpkin pies. If you get them in bulk are like two bucks, two fifty a, a pie. All right. What if you had a pumpkin pie giveaway just in your community of the same ones that you gave a pumpkin to with the pumpkin recipe, right? Guys, these are marketing ideas for you, okay? If I said, <clears throat> Red, I have, a, I have a buyer and I want you to, uh, I'm going to refer them to you, but I want a 30% referral. They're going to okay. buy a $300,000 home. <laughs> your commission is going to be around $10,000. So my, you're paying me a referral of $3,000. And you're happy to pay that. 7000 is better than no 1000 Exactly. So, so think about this. If you can make an investment in your business, in your database, over handing out a pie to your neighbors, how fantastic would that be? You're gonna be known as the person in the community in the neighborhood as the realtor, your real, their realtor, right? So maybe you put on uh, the community page of Facebook and just say, um, we're doing a, <clears throat> um, um, a pumpkin pie appreciation for Thanksgiving, who would like one in our community? Like our, our little community has a uh, community Facebook page sponsored by Kim and Tom Martin, uh, EXP Realty. And by the way, 
come, when would you be coming? We're going to be giving them away this day. So you set up your garage and have them all out there. And, and as they pull up, you bring them the, the pie. I'm going to tell you right now, when they get that pie, they're going to go, my realtor never did that for me. Well, hopefully I can be a new realtor, right? They're going to tell their friends, their family. They're going to tell everyone. Okay. So Thanksgiving is another opportunity for you guys to really reach out to your community, your past clients, your appreciation. See, right now is the time for appreciation. Okay. So there's a great little book, Red, Don't Buy It. Here's how I want you to get it for free. So appreciation marketing, Curtis Lucy, L-E-W-S-C-Y or S-Y, is uh, he owns appreciation marketing where you get the, the cards that you can send out. Okay. Uh, it's called AM cards, AM cards. So um, you get 25 cards a month. It's like $24 or whatever. You can send out cards. A lot of us have that. <clears throat> and, and I guarantee I'm speaking for him and you'll probably say, oh gosh, Tom, why'd you do that? But if you, if you started working with him on, on some appreciation marketing, he'd probably give you the book for free. All right. It's a cool little book. Um, and, and it just talks about how do we show appreciation to our customers in our local community. Guys, if you're prospecting for the next sale and you never meet with that customer ever again, that was a lot of work. Who would like to earn $100,000 from one customer in 10 years and then get a, a ton of referrals from them? Well, we, we all would, because here's the thing, that customer is gonna buy or sell every five, five years. So now you got two sales from them. And by the way, they're referring you out to three or four, three people. And those three people are referring you out. See, the, the, the one, per, one person can lead into a huge amount of referrals. And then all the ones picking up the pies, <clears throat> call them after Thanksgiving and say, hey, tell me, uh, what did you think about the pie? Was it good? Thank you so much for, for uh, participating and coming to get one. And they're going to say, oh, my gosh. See, but there's going to be a follow-up key to it, too. It's not like, hey, I gave you a pie. Give me referrals. Hey, what did you think? The, the, how was the pie? Was it okay? Was it, was it still, it, was it good? By the way, I got it at Sam's or Lowe's or whatever, if you're ever thinking of going there. All right? So Thanksgiving is a huge opportunity for charitable work going to our hospitals. I brought, um, I think it was not last year, the year before. Um, my wife and I always prepared a meal for the fire department anyways, because my son worked for the fire department. He was, a, on the, he was a firefighter. So we would bring Thanksgiving meals to the station, even if he wasn't working. Take a picture out there with the guys. It's just a good charitable, good charitable thing. You need to write off anyways this year, okay? Um, and then take a picture with them. Get your face out there. They know what you do on Facebook, right? So do something charitable. We also brought, um, I brought um, to um, downtown Orlando, one of the hospitals, we brought a big display of food. These nurses were literally in tears of thank you, right? Because who's bringing them food to show them, hey, we appreciate our nurses and, and doctors in our ER who are getting exhausted. What better time right now? What better time? And by the way, you don't have to be the one spending the money. Get with your lender or title company and say, listen, there's three hospitals in the local area. I want to bring, I want to bring them lunch and um, I want to bring them a hot lunch. So I'm going to call the the uh, the staffing there, and I'm going to ask them when the best time to bring it is, and then let's let's deliver it to them and uh, let them enjoy it. They are going to go, just be in awe, right? So so during these times, these healthcare workers are working their butts off. What better way than to bring them a meal for Thanksgiving, the day they're working? 
on Thanksgiving Day, what if you went to those three hospitals? And by the way, <clears throat> Publix, I believe Publix will deliver the full hot meal. So uh, just give them a call. I'm, I'm pretty confident though. So if you say, can you uh, deliver a full turkey dinner hot meal to this hospital? They'll deliver a whole turkey, mashed potatoes, uh, greens, and everything else for a, a set cost. Okay. Um, again, we need deductions, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you do that and you go, here's a hot meal. Thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, sponsored by uh, Style with EXP Realty. They're going to call you. They're going to thank you. They're going to they're going to show appreciation if you don't bring it in and you just have it delivered. So you can do that too. Okay. Sometimes you may not just want to walk in there. Okay. That's okay too. So those are some ideas for Halloween and those are some ideas for the Thanksgiving season. Um, there are so many different opportunities there to really make an impact in our communities, our uh, healthcare workers, um, someone during the holiday seasons to start building our database and even getting more business, okay? Now, as we roll into uh, late November, you know, Black Friday, and then you go into December. December flies by like that, right? It just blows by. So there's many different things that you can do for then, uh, for Thanksgiving, I mean, for Christmas as well. You know, um, maybe you just go to the, uh, the, the tree farm and you get all their, all their trimmings that they cut off and you just make reef neighbors. Put a reef, you know, if you got kids or know some kids that just can put it around a coat hanger and make a little reef out of the, uh, the, the trimmings, just pick them all up. Um, you know, when they cut the tree, they, it, it, they cut the end of the tree off. It's this little wooden disc, right? Maybe you get that little wooden disc and you put a little drill, a little hole in it, and you just put uh, happy, Merry Christmas, holiday season, whatever you want on there. Maybe it becomes a, uh, uh, a decoration for the tree. And on the back side, you put uh, compliments of wh whoever, you know. Um, you can burn it in there. Guys, there's so many, those tree trimmings, that little disc at the bottom, and, and I got this because I seen some, uh, some kids in the, in the schools do it for their, for their parents. So that's how I got the idea. You can go to the tree farm and they got all those little trimmings right there. Just pick them all up and ask them, okay, can you collect all these for me? And I'm going to come by each day and pick them up. Imagine if you made a little ornament or imagine if you took a picture of their family and you put it on the front of that thing, maybe and kind of burn the edges off or whatever and lacquer it and, and give it to them as a gift for your community, for your past clients, for your top cheerleaders. But you give it to them early. You know, you give it to them in the second week of December, right? Let them see that ornament or whatever it may be. These are, these are things, hey, who do you know? You call one of your top cheerleaders. Who do you know that that is really struggling uh, this holiday season that we can adopt the family? You know, if maybe if you made a care call to your top cheerleaders and said, hey, do you guys know anybody within your community that is, is really having some hard times during the holidays that we can, we can adopt the family for, for the holidays? It gives you the opportunity to talk to your, your, your database and it gives you an opportunity to get your team together. And here's the thing, your team is your lender, your home inspector, your electrician, your painter, everyone. You know, one, one year my son, and uh, I think it was, it might've been just my daughter and I, my youngest daughter, we delivered a Christmas tree to someone who um, they had tons of decorations. They were down and out. It was a really hard time for them. They couldn't get a tree. And I, it came back to us. So my daughter and I, I think it was just my daughter and I, we, we went as a family to pick the tree up, but my daughter and I delivered the tree. And 
That right there, for the last 10 or 11 years, Sean will call me almost every uh, Christmas and say, because of you, we had this. Thank you. And they're in a great place today, right? Um, but not only that, Sean always says, hey, Tom, I got a person in Daytona that used to work with me. They're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. See, you're building your business. See, when you build something, you're starting here and you're building up. You're not going to get a ton of business immediately doing stuff like that, but you're building something, okay? So nothing better than sending out a holiday card, whether whatever you, here's the other thing too, whatever your religious beliefs are, that's, that's fine, but this is actually a marketing opportunity. You can always send something out if you don't believe in uh, holidays and you know, whatever your religious beliefs are, find something else that you can do during these times of need. Okay. Um, so the holidays are the most heart touching opportunities to the consumer, to your neighbors, to the people in need, to our first responders, healthcare workers, you, you know, our, our son and daughter-in-law is in, in healthcare up in uh, Charlotte. There's nurses, doctors, they're being, they're burnt out. They're being yelled at constantly, the long waits. Uh, I'm sick and you guys don't take care of me, oh, blah, blah, blah. But imagine if you showed a little bit of appreciation to those people. By the way, our son and daughter-in-law, we, we, last year alone, I think we had four or five sales from, from them. From them. Here's a referral, here's a referral. And we don't, we don't pay them referral fees. They're not licensed, but man, it costs a lot of money for the wedding. And boy, it costs a lot of money to help them with their down payment on their home. And boy, it costs a lot of money for, you know. So, so there's rewards to them too, right? So what are you going to put in place for this time right now? See, we're, before you know it, we're back in January and we got New Year's resolutions. Why not take an opportunity to plan right now? All right, I'm going to take action. I'm going to buy the pumpkins and I'm putting them out there. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? People are going to love them and paint them. Or, you know, the other thing you can do is you can get those pumpkins. And maybe, you know, if you're crafty, like a lot of people, you have a pumpkin painting day or something like that. And you just bring all the pumpkins for the, as an event for your community. I don't know. I don't know. The other thing is, you know, uh, a good friend of mine, um, every year she used to do this, she used to have her husband dress up as Santa Claus into a chair and, and then say uh, pictures with Santa in our community. Here's the day that it's happening. And with technology today, hey, go ahead and write your name and email address down and your address, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you the photo. And if you would like one printed and sent to you, I can do that too. Santa, getting a, someone to pose for Santa for a couple hours might not be a whole lot of money. But imagine if you sponsored, did a sponsored thing for your community and just said, picture with Santa. I don't know, photo prop right? People don't like driving to the malls anymore sometimes to do that. The lines are long, it's frustrating, the kids, you know, whatever. So those are some general ideas that are very, very basic. For some of you, they're like, I'm not doing that. And that's okay. But for some of you, they're like, oh, I can do that. That's really simple. Between now and the end of the year, it's going to be, before we know it, it's gone. What can we do today to take the first step? All right, we got Halloween coming. How can we do that? Maybe you have pumpkin carving kits to, to your local community. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, but do something that's going to have your branding on it and everything else. And, and for whatever reason, I like the little idea of the little pumpkins and putting them out on people's doorsteps uh, for them nobody's going to yell at you or, or go, I can't believe you put a pumpkin out in front of my house. And if they do, who cares? Right. All right. 
So those are some great ideas for uh, growing your business during the holiday seasons. If anyone says to you, well, realtor so-and-so said it's a really bad idea to list during uh, Thanksgiving time. Say, that's why we need to talk because they're giving you poor advice. Here's why. Maybe you don't say giving poor advice, but maybe you say, here's why it is a great time to sell. All right? Any time of the year is the great time to sell. It really is. Any time of the year. All right. We have two hands raised. Styles was first because hers has been up for a while. And um, I will put that form into the chat box here in a second. Which form was it? Oh, the high efficiency. See, I, I lose track real quick. High efficiency, I'm going to put into the chat box so you guys can pull it down. Um, and high efficiency is with anything that we do. You know, you either do it mediocre and you get mediocre results, or you do it with high intensity and you get the best results. So either way, it's, it's your decision and your choice. No, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Okay. So I had, I have, listen, I've been doing this a very long time and I've been coaching agents and teaching classes for a very long time. Uh, prospecting doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. I know it doesn't work for you because you don't want to work it, but that's okay. If it didn't work, why are so many other people successful? Maybe it's time to look in the mirror. Maybe it's time to come to reality and go, you don't know everything. Why don't I learn from the people who are succeeding at it? Okay. Um, high efficiency, right? Oh, here we go. Got it. I did put, put a post one day that said I have conversations with myself, right? Um, I do that often. All right, there you go. All right, Stio, go ahead. Oh, gosh, I literally forgot I was going to ask. All right. It was something related to the bumpkins, but that's okay. I forgot. So I think, I, I, oh, I think it was something like an idea that I had was going to, when you go to the pumpkin patch to try to get those pumpkins, maybe talk to the owner of the, the patch and see if they can give you a discount of all the pumpkins and say, hey, I'll, 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 Give a, put a little ad in my thing about your pump, visit your pumpkin patch, and then you give me some discount if I buy 100 or 150 pumpkins or something like that. Maybe they'll give a discount. I know. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, you know, that's a good thing. And I know for us, one of the best and biggest pumpkin patches is, is at, our, at our church. I mean, people from all over come to this pumpkin patch. They got it set up with a maze and, and photo props and everything else. And if you went there and said, hey, I need a 100 little pumpkins, they're going to say, fine, here, take them for this much money. You know, um, again, you, you write it off. No matter what you spend is going to be a business deduction. OK, and that's 100 percent write off. Okay? <clears throat> it's 100 percent deduction, tax deducted. Um, Christy. You're muted. Yeah, Maybe. sorry. <laughs> I'm a little slow at this yet. So um, a couple of things I had an idea for is um, when you put the pumpkin on the porch, the card that you include with it, maybe on that card, ask them to reach out for you if they would like to have a free pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. That gives an opportunity for them to reach out to you either by text or by email, and, and then it engages some conversation. How perfect is that? See, you just, you just upped it one. There you go, Christy, that's a great idea. And when you put out those pumpkins, are you going to put on there also uh, pumpkin pie to reserve your pumpkin pie uh, call or email? Well, put the recipe and then say, if you're not a cook, reach out to me because, you know, and, and then it, in a little caveat in quotations, even if you are a cook, you can still reach out to me for a free pumpkin pie. Uh, Christy, I love that idea. That is, that's, that's a good follow-up thing right there for them to follow up with you. I would love a pumpkin pie or apple pie for uh, your, your appreciation back, whatever. Um, that's a great idea. And then another idea that I had was, um, 
So we have a gentleman that's in our neighborhood that decorates for Christmas like it's nobody's business. I mean, it's actually kind of like Griswold. It's, it, I mean, it's big time. <laughs> so my thought was to um, hire somebody to play Santa to sit in his yard and um, hire a photographer to take photos and then put out a, you know, put it out into the community. Hey, if you stop by, there'll be free photos with Santa. And then when I hand them a little card with their number on it for the photos, it's got my information on the back of the card. So when they reach out to get a copy of the photo, I'm, so, I'm still trying to work through that whole thing, but I still think that the Santa Claus and the photographer is a fantastic idea. Yeah. And you know what? You can actually be the photographer because you can set up a tripod and yeah. there's a little remote to your phone that you can put and just take pictures yourself. But here's the other thing. You can get a, a kid in high school who's in photography to do the photos because it, it helps them with their schooling. Volunteer hours. Volunteer hours. Um, a Santa Claus, you can, there's, you know, you can go um, to one of the costume stores and, and rent one for the day and have, you know, someone in the community dress up as Santa. I so actually, a, one of my very, very dear friends actually is Santa 365 days out of the year. He has a red motorcycle with antlers on it and Christmas lights. And he's, he is Santa 365 days a year. So if it's an off day that he doesn't have an event, I can probably get him to do it. So, so again, so here's the other thing I want you to, I, I was right. I was looking for my other book. Don't, don't, don't go and buy it, Red. It's okay. Um, it's called making ideas happen. See, you had an idea are you going to make it happen? Did you write it down and, and try and not try? There is no try. Are you going to put an action plan in place? Because that, Christy, what you just shared is goal for us. Thank you for that. And that's the purpose of these calls. You shared something that is golden. You found the Griswold in the community. How awesome would it be to bring more people there to see it by you having a photo prop? for them right that's great that's great um i'm gonna go in line here i see trisha houseman first i, I guess because it's going this way i'm thinking that's the way it was first so i'm gonna go yes. trisha and then terry hey tom good morning good morning i'm so sorry i don't have my face up regularly i have an issue with my camera i don't know what happened so again but let me, I have two things here. Uh, first of all, in our collaboration within our GPS group, I just really want to continue to edify not only you, but all of the other sponsors and the mentees that come and join in. Because this is like a friendly reminder to say, you know, if you're here, it's because you were, I'm going to call it divinely selected. And whether it is your mentor or your sponsor who is giving you the information, if it is anybody like Tom or George or anybody else, uh, Karen Lede, that has sponsored you into our lineage here, listen, you don't get it anyplace else. So this is as if your mentor or sponsor is dedicating these hours right now, every single day, one hour every single day on behalf of. So Tom, every single time that you agree to do another class, it is as if you are standing in my place, kind of like Jesus stands in our place over a sin, right? In all reality, or, you know, whatever you believe, if it, if it be Allah or the whatever, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, thank you for that powerful stuff, because the stuff that you bring out is our collaboration that I'm like, dang, he just did what I meant to say, but better. Or if somebody else brings an idea, Christy, awesome ideas about, you know, bringing this together. We would have not come up with this idea if you had not been on this call right here, right now, today, participating. So it's about being 100% present in your life, even though, new agents in here are dealing with a bazillion different thoughts in our head and trying to calm 
and deal with what's most important and it is being present here. So, the, and then my last point um, had to do with uh, discounting on expenses. So you're going to the pumpkin patch or you're going wherever and you're gonna, you're gonna ask the vendor and you're thinking we're, we're trained to negotiate. We can't help but want to negotiate somebody down. Let me kindly remind you, those vendors, depending on how hard you negotiate, is exactly what we deal with in the public when they want to ask for our discount. So here's what I do. And this is my philosophy. It's my personal philosophy. You do your business. But my philosophy is I might ask for a discount. In fact, a lot of times if I ask for a discount, I'm going to do it to make a point because I'm like, oh, and we'll see what their reaction is. But at the end of the day, guess what I do? I pay their market value. I kid you not. They're asking for whatever it is as a price. I pay it. But I let them know and give them an opportunity to say, I know lots of people in the public will try to over discount you. I believe in relationships. So when people do that to me on my commission, I earn every penny I make on my commission. And, it, and I know it doesn't feel well and I'm not gonna ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do. So remember that, like, or find that it just is all in synergy when I'm making a point on something. But I always do that and I make sure to tip people appropriately and I make sure to pay market value for things that I see and tell people I value them because I wish people valued us as real estate agents in the industry. So I'm kind of like PSAing on why we earn what we earn. Anyway, those are my three points. Thanks. Well, uh, Tricia, thank you so much for that. You know, the, the one pumpkin patch that we have is actually all the funds. And then we always tip extra to put into the jar because it, and it actually goes to the children's ministries for their, their trips and everything. But here's the other thing. I like what styles by saying, you know, purchase and, and get at this, but also get your vendors and your partners invested with you because it's not only going to benefit you. When I call Jake Lowe and I say, hey, Jake, I need, oh, yes. He says yes before I even ask for what I'm asking for because I'm delivering value to him. He's delivering value to me. You know, it, it's a win win. If it's not a win win, then it's not going to work. Win, win, or no deal. Period. Terry, uh, we got we got uh, six minutes, so we got Terry, Lizette, and Letty. So Terry, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic. Um, mine is actually kind of Halloweenish. I don't know how many people here are in South Florida, but the last weekend of October is the Fort Lauderdale uh, boat show. Thousands, thousands, thousands of people. So I've gone online and I'm looking up and I'm ordering fans like the little hand fans and I can get 250 of them for hundred bucks. So I'm just going to go down to the boat show. Need a fan, need a fan, need a fan, need a fan because it is so doggone hot. Everybody wants a fan and whether they keep it, pitch it, they're going to see it. And I was thinking I might do the whole pumpkin pie thing on there too. Just say, Hey, if you want a pumpkin pie, give me a call, something like that. But uh, I don't know how many people here are South Florida pay your 20 bucks, get in the boat show and just hand out fans to people. That is fantastic. Again, people want something to fan themselves off with, you know, and they even have the ones that you can stick on your, uh, I've seen people have these things where they stick it in their cell phone and the phone actually has the power to generate the fan to move, whatever. I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty darn cool. I've seen them. So all these ideas, events, uh, holidays, you got to get in there. So that's fantastic. Lizette, I see you. Hey, good morning, everybody. First time, um, I, ever, first time I spoke to you today. Yeah, we never talk. It's just so distant. So no, um, I just to bounce off of Trisha, um, I actually came into EXP because of Tom pestering me for like forever. But um, he, I love his leadership and not to give you some fluffer up but I'm just letting you know that you guys have a lot we can draw from this group there's a lot of talent here but I don't want to get into that um what I wanted to say is that I will be open to just putting it out there to the group I will be open to maybe we could do a mastermind for the holidays to give more time for ideas for events and anybody that I'm open to hosting it even outside of the morning calls or doing something you know 
Uh, just let me know what would be best. Again, I'm just putting it out to the whole group because there's so many things that we can do. I have wonderful ideas, right? Um, but obviously uh, we talk about fulfillment and getting it done. That's a whole other story. But if I could share with anybody so they can uh, um, make their business wonderful these holidays, I am more than happy to host or give it, or if anybody has better ideas, you know, bring it on board. So that way we can share with other people and put it to friction because the more we're out there, um, you know, there's so many things like Tom said, if you have a local charity or you have your, you guys don't understand that around you, just around you, you have people that are connected to things that they love, like non for profits, things that, you know, things that are dear to them. And really you should be catering to your sphere and what their likes and wants and what they pressure, what they um, appreciate most. So for example, I come from a background where, um, you know, I, I, I'm part of infant loss, I'm part of uh, veterans, I'm part of uh, church groups. So, you know, um, and this is, I'm saying this to myself, I'm preaching to myself that if we cater to these likes and wants of these people, these are the people that already know you and love you. And it's natural that they're going to thank you when you show love to the things that they love because they're in your community. Um, so I'm just sharing that. And, and I want to say just I'm open to doing something like that, that group thing about masterminding, because I think we have a lot of great agents here. I just think that we should share each other to give some idea, maybe a little push. Right. We can all fill in the gaps of what we're missing. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there was some great sharing there, which is amazing. And, and Tiffany and uh, Joe. I don't know if that's something that um, we can uh, take, see, making ideas happen, right? So Lizette has an idea of, of hosting a call and making all these ideas come to, to fruition. You know, how do, we, how do we set forth moving that within our GPS group? Well, here's the first thing that we do is go, okay, Tiffany uh, or Joe, what day should I, can I do the call and how can we put it into our calendar of events and our daily emails for this amount of time? So. Thank you, Lizette, for um, already taking charge of that. And because many people, I've seen Deep clapping his hands and I've seen many people make comments of that's a great idea. So I, I, making ideas happen is more important. Creating, a, a, we come up, as a, I was reading a, 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 an article the other day and it says, this is, this is not a group coaching thing. This is a group mastermind. So when a bunch of great, highly intelligent uh, high-minded individuals come into play, ideas come out. See, it's not the ideas th that uh, are great. It's the person implementing and making the idea happen that becomes great. See, we get all the ideas from other people. It's the people that take action that make those ideas even greater. So, Letty. Hi, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Well, I need to ask something. Um, I, I love uh, Lisette's idea of getting a mastermind because I am not a creative person. Like these ideas for me are like awesome because I don't, I will never have them myself. I'm, not, I'm a nerd. I'm not creative. So I appreciate you guys working as a team. Um, I, I'm, I love doing big events like, you know, community events, like vendor tables and things like that, just to put up, a, you know, a table, a tent and, um, just go and meet, and meet people. That's like my my style. So I signed up for a Halloween event in um, downtown Kissimmee. They do it once a year. I think it's like they're expecting around 5,000 people to come in. So I have a table there. I'm going to be a vendor, uh, but I have no idea. I mean, of course, I'm going to bring my flyers, business cards, ca candy for the kids. But do you guys have any ideas or how can I make it more effective or, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of my question. Letty, um, just so you know, um, I, I'm going to give you a hint, hint. You don't have to go that far. Um, uh, Daryl Dietzik was a youth minister. And so we, we, we did this for three years of putting up events and activities to engage people. Contact Daryl. I'm putting Daryl out there. I'm sorry, Daryl. But you can contact Daryl or privately message us for ideas to engage people the idea of doing events or anything like that is to engage people even on social media and we'll talk about it when we do it the mastermind but there's a lot of things that you can do but if you want to get interaction talk to daryl listen your local youth minister probably knows 20 million ways how to engage people if you're from a church so i'm just putting it out there so 
But anybody else wants to answer a question, I'm just putting out there so you know where you need to reach out to. Thank That's you. fantastic. Thank you, Lizette and Letty. Deep, how are you, my friend? Morning, everyone. Amazing class again, Tom. My favorite day of the week. You know it. Uh, I, Lizette, I, great idea. I'm in. Uh, let me know when where to bring the champagne bottles. So we'll pop this on a... I can be in my office and start drinking. Uh, great idea. I've been doing this for maybe 10 years. I've been feeding. I've been uh, being part of non different nonprofits. Never did it uh, the right way. You know, we all don't know the right way. We all know what we want to do. We just don't know how to do it. So what I did four years ago that every year me and my uh, team as Alina would do donate toys from ourselves to Salvation Army, go shopping ourselves, really make it very impactful because we are out there picking the items first. It was great. Four years ago, I came across an amazing nonprofit or local uh, organization called Embrace Family. And I have not no problem sharing with everybody. And every year what I did, I kind of took the approach of getting <clears throat> my clients involved. Everybody wants to help. They just don't know how to do it. So just to give you an idea, in the last three years, the, the first year was $2,000 of toys. Second year was $4,000 of toys. Last year was $8,000 of toys. These are brand new items. I'm talking about uh, 1,500 to 1,800 pieces of toys that I was able to, my team was able to collect from the people that we know, friends, uh, clients, flash clients. Uh, I, we made it so easy. Somebody sends me a Venmo money. I would go shop. I would tag them on Facebook. They see themselves tagged on and it went crazy. So use your people, guys. People want to help. They just don't know how to. People send me $10. Somebody came and dropped off one football at, at my office it, it was like a, you know, you talk about a small fire, it just became a, you know, a huge thing. It was just a drop in the bucket. I'm, I'm pumped, you know, uh, for EXP uh, community service two days ago. Uh, I think uh, Gina's not on the call. We, uh, I, we sponsored 250 meals. We went and helped. The video is not ready if you haven't posted it yet. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. You just got it do it. And there's so many people and if somebody needs help, just call me. Everybody got my number. I'll be part of anything and everything. No, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as going back. And same thing with the toy drive. If somebody wants to do it, we can, as a, as our ecosystem of GPS, we can make a huge impact. Just imagine Lizette, Stael, Tom, uh, Red, uh, Frank, everybody posting the same organization and it's all EXP agents. Just imagine what kind of a, you know, we have what, a couple of thousand agents in our Central Florida area and this is EXP agents. And we can really make a big impact when it comes to these things. Deep, Deep I absolutely love that. And I know George would be blown away by that. When can we start that in place for that drive to start it going. And I know on every single one of our calls, if we're purposeful on sharing that link on our pages, participating in it, making our, sending it out to our database, this that would make an impact for not only for our GPS and our- Tom, on, on top of that is a form that I make the actual, you know, clients, friends and family fill out. They get a thank you letter from the actual organization and they become their part of their database. So just imagine how impactful when they get a push card in the mail saying thank you and thank you for your donation. Wow. So I love it. It's, it's, that it's is a, pretty, a very impactful. It's, you know, uh, I think it's a great thing. I think we should keep on doing and, you know, more we give, only better it gets. Uh, getting off the topic of gifts and uh, thing. I'm really upset with myself when I saw what you posted, the uh, attachment, you know, uh, uh, I'm looking for it again. I forgot what was that the called. High efficiency, low high efficiency. High efficiency. Yeah. As of today, I'm not saying this to brag. I, I Please don't take me the wrong way. I've got 36 transactions done. I have four more months to go till I hit my uh, year, uh, one year of really the, my anniversary. And I fall in the low category. I am so upset that I can't even tell you. That's all I want to say. 
Well, you know what, Deep? Thanks for being so transparent and humble. Um, th these these high efficiency, low efficiency is is really something we got to look at, and we got to be honest with ourselves and say, where am I at? Where am I at in my efficiency to achieve my goal? Where am I at in my efficiency to grow my business? Where am I at to succeed in my business? And, and maybe you take it to your business partner and say, rate me honestly. <laughs> That's a reality check. It is. Because we're going think, to be blinded by our own successes and they're going to tell us right out. Hey, I think my, this my business partner is in the same boat as I am. So I think we'll, we'll rate ourselves, you know, low. I, I personally will. I'm, I'm, I think I'm my worst critic. So I'm always competing with myself, nobody else. That's my everyday thing is how do I show better? What do I do better today from what I did yesterday? That's my motto of my life. That's it. Nothing else. That's fantastic. Um, thank you for everyone who participated. Um, I, I want to answer a question for someone who put in the chat box about uh, this was Trisha Hausman. I just want to, I want to say, Trisha, um, what, I'll, I'm going to reach out to a few different people, but one of the things I highly recommend you think about when you're um, anyone who's looking to hire someone, whether it be uh, a personal assistant, executive assistant, whatever it may be, make sure you have them do the disc profile through Tony Robbins and read it and make sure it fits exactly for what you're looking for. People may take a job because they need money, but they're not in the right role. So I always say if somebody doesn't fit if i don't ever look at someone and say they're a horrible assistant no they're not a horrible yeah they're a horrible assistant but they'd make a great whatever because they're in the wrong role right they're in the wrong role so make sure whenever you're hiring someone you follow the process and make sure that you set high expectations mutually mutually so that'll always be another another call, but I, I just wanted to answer that for you, Tricia. All right. So thank you guys for all your participation. I hope that helped. Deep, thanks for always, uh, you, you know, giving your feedback. Lizette, uh, Christy, Tricia, Style, Letty. Thank you guys all so much for participating. Your participation is awesome. Here's the thing. You brought so much from your participation that is going to be helpful to others. The most important thing is making ideas happen. It's a great book, by the way. If you have an idea, if you're surrounded around people that have ideas, the idea never happens unless there's that one person that runs with it. You ever have someone say, oh my gosh, I thought of inventing something like that 10 years ago, and this person is making millions of dollars from it. They stole my idea. No, they took action on an idea that no one else did. So make your ideas happen and, and go out there and make an impact for the community during the most important times of the year and have a, a humble servant hot. So, all right. It is all yours, Tiffany and Joe, and uh, great to see everyone.